Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. So a little sad news, um, at least for me, this lovely scene here with the lighthouse and the ocean sunset, this was requested by uh, one of, or two different commenters on these videos. And I painted this lovely scene and realized that the recording wasn't recording. Uh, so I don't have this, there is no video for this right now. I will revisit this in the next sketchbook, but we're gonna go on to our last page. I'm gonna do something different today, uh, but I just wanted to let you know if you, you spied this in the sketchbook and there's no video and you're looking for it, it's because it didn't record. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover that up to protect it over here. Let's clip this down and perfect. And then we're gonna paint over here and we're gonna do something Super simple, um, but lots of fun. We're gonna paint some coffee today and we're gonna do a coffee cup. Uh, I love coffee. I always have coffee with me. Usually when I paint, I have it in my handy dandy travel mug today because this helps me from dipping my paintbrush in my coffee cup. And um, we are gonna paint a cup, a saucer, and the coffee inside, but we're gonna do it from the top down. Oh, look at this, I spilled. <laughs> Spilled coffee because I was shaking my mug in front and there was a little coffee here in the lip. It's all right, this will give us a nice authentic feel. Oh look, it came right off, perfect. Okay, so let's draw. We're gonna do a little drawing, but we're gonna use this lovely tape holder for our stencil. I am gonna draw the inside and also the outside of this tape holder, there we go. So that is going to give me, actually it's even, I thought it was gonna to be too thin, but it's a little thicker than I need, um, the rim of the coffee cup. So I'm actually going to, let's see, I'm gonna keep the outside one. And, but since I have two circles now already stenciled out, I can easily just Follow that line in between. And these don't have to be perfect, perfect, perfect. But I can follow that line in between and just draw. And I'm gonna erase the one on the inside, inside. Or actually, you can even leave it there and use that as your coffee line, okay? So the innermost circle is going to be coffee itself. This space in here is going to be a little bit of white of the mug, and then this will be the rim of the cup. Don't get lost here. Okay, we're gonna put a handle on. Um, I'm gonna put the handle up here in this corner. And the handle's just gonna be like a rounded rectangle. And we're gonna give it a little peek like as if we're seeing it a little bit from the side, there's gonna be a little shadow down here uh, for like inside the mug. Just a tiny bit, cause really you're looking straight down and you might be at just a slight angle. Um, and what else here? I'm gonna round this out. All right, so for the coffee inside, I'm gonna do just a little wave. And this is gonna be, we're gonna put bubbles in here. So some slight coffee, coffee, like frothing bubbles. So I'm just gonna draw a bunch of circles of slightly varying sizes, kind of along the edge here. Mostly gathered in one corner. Leave a little trail of them this way. I think that's enough, yeah. All right, and then if you wanna do a saucer, you can just do the cup like this, but if you wanna do a saucer around it, it's just another big circle. And this one's gonna go right off the page. So the best way to do something like this, if you've never painted a coffee cup before, is to go brew a cup of coffee <laughs> and get yourself a mug and 
look at it to see all of the different parts and components to see what a cup looks like from above. And I even let this one go off the page a little bit. Perfect. Just checking that we're recording. <laughs> Don't want to have another accident. Okay, so lots of different parts here to work with. This just gets a little thick right over here, a little thicker than the rest. So I'm just scooching this in just a little bit. And I don't know if you see my um, handle is kind of, this should be perpendicular. So these angles should be the same, but see how this angle is a little wider than that one. So I'm just gonna fix my handle a little bit now that I've really looked at it. So making sure I have perpendicular angles. There we go. And then you can put a little swoop you right there. Okay, let's get painting. Right, I'm gonna get my water and I have my core paints. You can lighten up your edges if you want with your kneaded eraser. I'm gonna leave mine in just so you can see. I'm gonna use cobalt teal, which is this beautiful uh, blue color. It looks very um, like ocean, beachy, you know, re reminiscent of that, but it also gives me a very vintage, like 50s blue feel, that robin's egg blue kind of feel for this cup and saucer. So I'm gonna water this down. I'm gonna swatch out this color over here to make sure I'm kind of like on the right track. And if you want to, if it's like just a little too blue, you could always pick up a little green, a little sap green and add it. I think I may have added a little too much green, but then we have a little bit more of a green. Like minty green feel as well. This is a little bit more true just another fun, interesting color, but we'll water that down. And you know what, I'm gonna take some of that original blue, with no green in it, and start from there. And I might use this for some shadows. All right, so let's start with um, just the rim of the cup. So I'm gonna leave, I'm actually going to lighten this center line. So the line that's in the middle of the rim. I want that to leave some highlights in there. All right, so I'm gonna start with this outer rim of the cup. Go all the way around and I'm kinda not going, I'm gonna skip a few spots and leave some white highlights. And that's just light reflection off of like the porcelain of the cup. I got a little carried away here. My circle got a little funky. All right, I'm gonna paint the handle. Also gonna leave a little highlight on there in white. I'm gonna pick up some of this darker green. And just pop this into a few areas. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna move on to our other sections after you let that dry. Okay, so after you've given that a second to dry, we're gonna jump into the coffee. We're gonna leave this white ring around here for now um, and jump in for our coffee. I'm going to use burnt sienna, so this very warm brown and also raw umber, which is a very cool brown to make our coffee. Okay, so we're gonna start with the burnt sienna. And pretty light, lots of water, and we're gonna work our way around these 
bubbles or these circles. They don't have to be perfect, but just kind of work your way around. You could mask these out, but in my journal, I'm just going to kind of go between around and you could definitely use a smaller brush for this. I'm using a size 12 with a terrible point on it. It's not terrible, terrible, but it's not great. All right, and then get the rest of this kind of filled in all the way up to the edge there. And then while this is still wet, so we want things to stay pretty wet, I'm gonna drop in some darker color of the same color, so burnt sienna but more concentrated and I want to create varying values in here. I want some of this to be super light and stay that light color. Don't worry, we'll get back to the bubbles. We have some more stuff to do with them. in a little more and the other half of our coffee is actually going to be that deep burnt umber nope not burnt umber raw umber I'm going to pick up a little raw umber a little burnt sienna I'm going to throw a little bit of that in here just a mix of the two But you can see I'm leaving like this spot right in there, pretty light colored. All right, so raw umber. Let's get a bunch of that mixed up. And we're gonna go right around. And I know things look a little disjointed now. Like they don't quite go together, but they will. I'm gonna take some darker color of that. <clears throat> While this is still wet, excuse me, drop that in as well. And again, because coffee has is a liquid, there's lights above it. Um, usually there's some reflection in it. So it's okay to leave some spots lighter and darker. So we have some light in here that's reflecting um, and that's how it would normally look. Okay, let's go back to our saucer. So we have the rim of our coffee cup. I'm gonna make a really light version of this. For our saucer, we're just gonna go around the whole thing, kind of a flat wash right up to the edge and we'll add in some shadows later. Do, 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 do. There we go. Let's get a little bit of a shadow here along the edge. Of course, it would be a little bit darker, most likely on the edge. This is going to dry much lighter as it dries, so I'm putting it in, but again, leaving some lighter, whiter spots. All right, let's leave that. 
And while the rest of this is drying, I'm gonna come back in and do one more layer on the rim of our glass here. And I definitely got a little funky and wasn't paying as much attention. I am going to get a smaller brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that same blue color, add water. I'm gonna come around the edge here and just clean this up a little bit. Still preserving some white highlights. So even here where I'm cleaning it up, I can leave a little gap on the inside. Don't worry, we'll get to that white. That's not gonna stay pure white. It's going to be a white-ish color, but it's gonna have like coffee, like a little gray and a little bit of coffee stain on it. But that will be kind of last. And you can definitely on your rim or any areas with a painting like this, you can mask out areas that you want to preserve and highlight, or you can go back in and use some bleed proof white if that's your preference. If it's too difficult for you to kind of work around those areas. Okay, that's looking great. So let's see our interior here. I'm loving this color. I'm going to add a little bit more darker color around the edge there. Clean off my brush, blend it out. Again, I don't want to eat up those highlights completely. And then I'm going to take my darker burnt umber and all of these little bubbles, I'm actually going to paint a darker color inside them leaving kind of a ring of white around. So it's almost like it's got a, it's like if it was an eyeball, it's got like a little pupil inside and then a ring of white around the outside. And that's like the frothy bubble part. I'm also going to take some darker little bits, kind of just pop them in with no white. But just a ring around brown. And let's give this whole side a little bit more, a little bit more burnt umber. Let's let that dry and let's add some shadows onto the saucer while that is drying and we have a little bit more to do with some bleed proof white. Okay, so for the saucer, we're gonna put in a shadow here and kind of a shadow along this side because the light we're gonna guess is kind of coming from some direction over here-ish. So let's pick up with this blue, I'm gonna pick up some ultramarine and mix it in here. See, that's like a much darker kind of gray blue. And I could even go darker for sure. We're gonna give the inside of this handle a little bit. Maybe add a little Payne's gray. And then I'm gonna go right along the rim over here. Boop, 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 boop. 
nice and steady along the edge of the cup, but then blend it out. We want this side to be soft, but the inside to be a hard edge because that's where the cup ends. So that gives it a little bit more three dimensionality, let it pop off the page a little bit. And you could do the same thing with the saucer and the ground. And by that I mean, or the table or whatever it's sitting on. So along the edge of this saucer, we can do just Payne's gray. So we're just doing gray with no hint of blue. You do wanna make sure this is dry I don't think mine is. Hold on, let me hit it with the heat gun. All right, and let's take, okay, so dried it, make sure it's dry. And then again, you can kind of crisp up your edge by putting a shadow, a hard line along the one side. And I'm actually gonna switch to my bigger brush to blend this out. And then just take water and blend, blend, blend. You do wanna make sure to get to it pretty quickly so you don't have too harsh of a line on the on this side. The I'm just gonna to have to add more paint to kind of bring that in line. There we go. So there, that helps it kind of pop off the page a little bit by adding these shadows on both the saucer and the cup. The coffee's looking pretty good. We're gonna go in and add a little bleed proof white, or if you have a gel pen, you could do that. Um, you do want all of your brown, um, all of this to be dry as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take my smaller brush and a little bleed proof white might need to water it down a little, but you wanna just come in and add, I'm gonna add some dots like in the middle and then maybe some tinier, smaller dots. You can even add a little few squiggly lines along the edge for that little foamy foam but don't go too crazy I'm just adding a little more burnt sienna in and then lastly we just have to do our the inside of our cup so I am going to take really, really light paints gray and kind of put it on the inside here. I'm gonna leave this side in shadow because again, if our light is kind of coming this way, this will be in shadow, but this will be kind of bright over here. So really, really light this. Leaving that in highlight, I'm gonna take some of my burnt sienna, nice and watered down and add that in there as well to give it kind of a, a brownish stain in a few areas from the coffee. And you, on this side, you could do a very light, very, very light wash. And again, kind of coming in along the edge There we go. There's our fun little cup and saucer. 
so much fun to paint with you. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, check out the description for links to supplies and materials. We are going to be starting a brand new sketchbook in our next video because we have officially completed this one. There are no more pages to paint on. I have some swatches and some hot mess from much earlier uh, in this one, but we'll go over everything that we've painted and then we will break open a brand new one. So thanks for sticking with me on this journey every day, watercolor journal ideas. Um, and I will see you for the next one. Happy painting y'all. Take care.